Hi, this is Whitney from 3D Printing Today podcast, also known as Shapespear on the Thingiverse. Uh, and I'm talking today about Veronis. Uh, these are the crazy models that you see all over the place uh, that look like you took some kind of an object and somehow changed it into like 1970s macrame. They're really cool, and this is how to make them. So you're going to start out in a program called MeshLab. Now there's a bunch of tutorials you can find out there on the web uh, that are about how to make Veronis uh, doing the whole process in MeshLab. So starting with a model that you bring in and in the end you export a 3D printable uh, Veroni model from MeshLab. I'm going to show you my own way of doing it, which I think is a little bit of an improvement on that. Um, I'll show you why. We're going to be using MeshLab and then using Blender for the last couple steps. So this is uh, a file that we're going to start with. You can see it's the logo of everybody's favorite 3D printing podcast, 3D Printing Today. Uh, I'm going to turn on... There we go. And turn on the lines... So you can see the wireframe, so you can see all the little, uh, the little facets we have there. It's important to have a fairly well subdivided mesh. You, you want to have a lot of points there before you try and make your Verona. You'll get much better results. Basically, as many as you can stand, <laughs> as many as your computer will stand. Um, since I'm recording with a screen recorder as well, I'm not going to push things. But if I were doing this just on my own, I would probably have quite a bit many more vertexes here. So there's two components basically to the Voronoi equation. There is the mesh that you're doing the operation on and then there is the point cloud which forms the seeds of the mesh. In your final Voronoi sculpt all of the holes, each hole in the final mesh is generated by a seed which is a point in a point cloud. So we need to create that before we can create the Veronoi. The easiest way to do that is to go to Filters and go to Sampling, let's say Poisson Disk Sampling. Now the number of samples you choose here is the number of holes that your Veronoi is going to have in it when you're done. So you can vary this and get quite different results. We're going to make this pretty easy and I'm going to say, you know, let's try 200 here. And I'm going to click Apply and then close. Now you'll notice if you have the layers panel open here that another layer has popped up which is our samples. Let's turn off our high-res mesh and if you hold down the alt key and then click the scroll wheel you can make your little points there bigger makes them easier to see. So you can see this is made sort of a random selection of points from all around our mesh here. Um, if we turn the main mesh back on you can now sort of see where they're lying and you'll see in a minute when we make the Veronoi calculations each one of those will seed what will end up being a hole in our final model. I should point out at this point that this is sort of a random selection of them which will give us the random Veronoi pattern that you know you see a lot of but if we selected very regular grid-like pattern, and there's other ways of doing that, um, there's ways you can do it in MeshLab and other ways you can do it in Blender. I'll go into that in another video, but you can control where the holes end up. So basically you can control the pattern of the holes in your final Veronoi. So we're ready to make the Veronoi calculation. Let's go to Filters, Sampling, and at the bottom of sampling, there's Voronoi Vertex Coloring. Select that, click Back Distance On, and click Preview. You need to make sure that in the To Be Colored Mesh is your main mesh that you're working on, and Vertex Mesh is your point cloud that's going to provide the seeds. So here you see the beginnings of our Voronoi. You see how each one of these points has seeded a hole around it. It's interesting that they're not uh, exactly in the center of the hole and basically what the Voronoi calculation does is for each one of these points it calculates the number of cells that are around it that are closer to this point than they are to any of the other points and that gives you this sort of crazy weird macrame spider web sort of cool pattern. Okay so let's click apply and then close that. We can turn off 
the samples, turn off our seeds. We don't need to look at them. So here we are. We have just created the Voronoi, and at this point it's just in colors. So we want to um, actually create it, you know, make it 3D printable. So let's go up to filters and we'll say selection. Selection by vertex quality. So if you are going to, to do the process the way I do it, which means you're going to finish by doing your final modeling steps in Blender, which I think is much easier, there are a couple of things you need to do at this stage to make sure that your files will work properly in Blender. We just turned on preview so we can see what we're doing. You need to turn off inclusive selection. And the other thing let's do at this point is uh, let's turn off the color. So if you go up to render, say color none, that's going to turn off all of the, the background colors that were existing in our mesh as it was. So make sure that inclusive selection is not checked and that'll make sure you get a nice clean result in Blender. So then you want to move your file markers here till you get the right selection. Let's uh, set this one to zero and set this one to zero as well. That usually gives you the nicest pattern. Now we have these red lines here are indicating our selection. And those are actually the parts of the model we want to keep. So we need to go up to filters and uh, selection invert selection click apply on this uh, you know mesh lab does a lot of things that's really cool but the interface on it it's a little bit goofy okay so now we've inverted our selection and the parts of the model we want to delete are now red if we go up in here we click the center most of the delete functions and that will take all those out and now you can see we have in 3d form our uh, mesh like which is basically the the start of our Voronoi now it's kind of chunky um, you can also notice that it's still got this you know sort of red shadow there let's go up to uh, filters selection and we'll say select none apply that and close and now you can see we've just got our actual model that we're working on now so you see it's kind of kind of chunky and and alias looking and that's not going to look real good i mean you could use that it works you can export that and work on that but usually we want it a little bit smoother and rounder so if you go up to smoothing fairing and deformation and go laplacian smooth and smoothing steps three is usually good let's preview it make sure it looks good See how that just nicely rounded everything off. Now you can jack up the iterations uh, more if you want to round things more, but I think that looks pretty good. So at this point, there is a process where you can finish turning this model into th a 3D printable model. You can see right now it's just a surface. So if you run that into your slicer, your slicer is not going to know what to do with it. Most of them won't at least. So we're going to go ahead and export this and then import it into Blender. And I'll show you how to finish it off in Blender. And I promise you it's a lot easier. Okay, so here we are having exported our file from MeshLab and imported it into Blender. Uh, exported as an STL and imported into Blender. And you can see we've got our 3D file, but it's just that single surface. And that's what the last couple steps of the process are. We're going to fix that. We're going to make this file so that it's actually a solid so that we can 3D print it. And to do that, make sure you have the file selected. Go here to the little wrench icon. Say add modifier. We're going to add a solidify modifier. And then go to just grab the thickness. And you can just, if you click and scrub your mouse... You can see interactively, right as we're doing it, you can see which way, you know, how thick it's going to be when you're when you're done. Um, if you give it negative values, it thickens it to the outside. Positive values, it thickens it to the inside. And you can decide 
exactly how you want that to work. So let's get a nice, uh, oops, my mouse is a little sticky. <laughs> Getting a little quirky here. Let's give it a nice, we'll try two. That looks like a good, a good thickness for this model. Okay, now because it's Blender, we don't have to commit this modifier. We can leave this modifier open and come back and adjust it, and we can add other modifiers on top of that. So let's scroll back a little bit so we can sort of see a wider view. And uh, let's apply another modifier. This time we're going to add a smooth modifier. Okay, I like to round the edges of these things, make them a little bit neater. Um, so here we're going to give it, say, let's give it a repeat factor of 20. Let's see what it looks like. Wow, that made everything really skinny. Let's uh, change that to 10. That looks a little bit better. Okay, so now you can see we have nicely rounded edges. I gotta say, Mesh Lab has really nice algorithms for smoothing. Uh, much better smoothing algorithms than are available in uh, in Blender um, and much wider variety. Some smoothing algorithms work better for some things than others. You could export this to to back to MeshLab and smooth it there. I really like to take things into 3D Code and smooth it because it has a wonderfully you know beautiful smoothing algorithm. Um, but for now, we'll just do it in, in Blender. Make it easy. We can also add another modifier here. Uh, which is a subdivide surface. We're going to do a Catmull Clark subdivision. Now you see how that smoothed things up, made things nice and rounded. Uh, Catmull Clark is wonderful for um, smoothing surfaces and rounding sharp edges. The problem is it adds an enormous number of vertices in that process. We're doing one iteration of Catmull Clark and it's uh, we're almost up to a million vertices here so you don't want to run too many um, iterations which you control down here uh, you got to be real careful and watch up at the top here the size of your model because you can very quickly overwhelm your computer with with subdivisions like that um, but that looks pretty nice uh, it's nicely rounded um, it's got enough uh, structure, you can see what it is, but it's uh, changed the logo into you know, a neat new form. In Blender, you don't have to commit these modifiers until you're sure that you want to lock down some feature of it. In fact, you don't ever have to commit them because if you go over to the export menu and say File, uh, and export this as an STL or an OBJ or whatever you feel like. You got a bunch of options there. Uh, it takes into account all the modifiers that you've got in, in running in your modifier stack but haven't applied yet, and it imports the fully modified form. So you could actually save this as a blend file, and then at a later date, you can come back and change these things. Say, instead of thickness of two, we want a thickness of four, um, and it changes that and updates it. Um, so I think this is a much, much better way to do the final thickening and the final tweak than it is to do it in MeshLab. You can also go up to your scaling section here and you can set the final dimensions for what you, how you're going to print it. And you can make sure that when you export your STL file that it's scaled properly to print on your printer. And those sort of things are, you can do them in MeshLab, but they're much less straightforward. And the other thing that's really cool about Blender is, of course, since it's Blender, um, if we just make a few additions here, we can render an image. And in fact, I'm going to do that here because this looks like it would be a royal pain to try and 3D print this. It would require an enormous amount of support I'm not likely to ever try and 3D print this, but I can make a nice rendering in Blender. But there you have it. I'm going to do another video showing sort of the more advanced topics in making Voronoi's and how to make a replica of uh, Dizingoff's famous cells bowl. So tune in for that. And also make sure you keep listening to the 3D Printing Today podcast. Thank you.